yeah, 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 na, 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 yeah. Certain fire flames, now I'm born again. Times really change, talk truth. We've seen better days, the youth not safe again. What a damn shame, talk truth. I want that them are promo, so quick them selling out, them sold them cashing out. Yeah, well, this is Kemetic 9 representing for I Just Star and the Mindset. If you now move right, get your mind checked. Oh, yeah. Mindset, blessed love, manners, and respect. We have a great day, them in the divine name of His Imperial Majesty, Emperor Eel Selassie I the First, and also Empress Menin the First, Marcus I, Holy Emmanuel I, King Selassie I, Ja, Rastafari. One more day above ground, beautiful viewers and subscribers, as they are them know, life is our ultimate position. No, no greater than that, no matter what Guan and Tapawa we see a Guan Zin. Um, great to have the item here today. We have a very special program um, set up for the item today. We have a special guest on the program scene, and um, is a bridging that we see on the social space. Um, very active, I must say. Um, is a bridging that most of the item uh, might be familiar with. Zin, uh, it's a bridging, it's a Rastafari bridging um, that is an attorney. He is a reggae artist. He is a YouTuber. Zin, and a lot more. Zin, I'm talking about brother. Quasi Banso. Blessed love, uh, Brother Quasi. Warm welcome to the Mindset Program. Yes, greetings, greetings in that divine name. Obviously, the Pure Majesty Empire, the last the first. Glory and honor in the name of its chosen queen, Empress Wazir Menen. It's a great honor to be here on the Mindset, you know, gift and Rastafari. Yes, Brother Quasi, and before. Um, a reason with Brother Quasi, I just want to um, remind the item of a few things, um, a few um, little advertisement. Um, do remember that the program is powered by Yard Slang Closing, all right? Yard Slang, wait there. Somebody says something about Jamaican patois and style and fashion. Yes, to Ross, me I searched the other day online and buck up on a new, authentic Jamaican clothing brand. Wagwan are the latest and newest one in a t-shirt, booty, slippers and woman's bag. And a whole heap of other things I may not even mention. Search online for more information. Yard slam! Hit them with a bang. Yard slang hitting them with a bang. Yeah, man, check them out on all of the social platform. Um, that's where you can get your customized t-shirts and woodies and um, so on. You know what I mean? Yeah, man, check out the Jamaican slang in all different farm. Yeah. So um, we have a we have a special announcement. Um, you know, for people who are traveling to Ghana. You know, if you are traveling to Ghana, Zin, we have a, a new sponsor on um, the platform here uh, by the name of Aquaba Homes. And um, they are an Airbnb um, organization um, that deal with um, accommodation in Ghana if you're looking to travel to Ghana and you want somewhere to stay Zin check out um, Aquaba Homes you can find them on the on the Airbnb app Zin I'll be leaving a link in the description you can check out Aquaba Homes um, you know their prices is very affordable and what they have an offer at the moment is a two-bedroom 
um, place, apartment, Zin, two bedroom apartment in North Legan, Zin, um, just a little bit outside, well, just a little bit um, in between Medina, Zin, and, and North Legan. So it's a very um, prime location in 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 ghana in the capital um accra zin not legan um madina zin so check them out right check them out if you're looking to um you know stay in ghana if it's two weeks three weeks a week or a month check out aquaba homes zin you can find them on um the airbnb or you can contact them on aquaba homes ghana at gmail.com zine so check them out on the airbnb if you're looking to stay in ghana all right if you're looking to spend some time if you're looking to visit all right yeah check them out on the airbnb app aquaba homes ghana all right yeah man get your accommodation up book with them uh, mention i just started them say you will get um, a 10 percent off the bookings if you mention i just star all right so yeah man put that in our no telephone zane because i know say this on the story everything right about now so just put that in our telephone just in case you know, want to travel to Ghana on a plan, don't know Aquaba Homes is the place where you know you can get um, you know new bill, you know fresh the bill accommodation, you know what I mean two bedroom, you know kitchen bathroom, you know the whole shebang. All right, yeah. So all right, that's a way there in terms of um, you know the advertisement and thing. Do remember you can also become a patron member. Zin become a star seed um, on the Iger Star Mindset Patron. Zin, we have six people over there already. We want some more people where I go pay some money for see some of the content them Zin. So no disrespect, but um, we have to be real about what is happening here. You know, we need the item strength and support. Some would love the item um, become a patron member of, um, you know, I just started the mindset, become a star seed um, family. Zane, and, you know, we can start um, disseminate some of the information that, you know, we have um, for the item. Zane, so become a star seed, I just started mindset patron family. All right yeah so our special guest you know it now gonna normal in the night you know me i tell you no <laughs> brother crazy well, welcome again in her majesty yeah man the day i said truants of judgment you know we give thanks give thanks i love the intro we love the commerce and the business mindset you know that i want to see is an inspiration to and i as a fellow content creator and one who has watched the eye you know for some time before i even started i channel i was aware of the eye and you know the consistency you know what i mean see. And, and i just want the eye before we get started never make anyone try Really smart on your think of what the I have built is really commendable. Give and thanks. I and I are going to look to become a part of this star seed energy too, you know? Majesty. Um, yeah, we want, we want support because we have to circulate the Rastafari dollar. And I don't think one know the work that the I put in to, to be consistent putting out this kind of content. You know what I mean? I see the I doing kids now and different things and I see the eye vision, you know, and to all who are watching this within the bridging audience, it's, it's up to all of I and I if we love this type of content that I and I have to support it. You know, me, me born complaint right now amongst I and I as Rastafari and Pan-African family. If we want to change, 
we have to finance and invest and fund that change to happen. So True. just want to make that know before we even get started. You know what I mean? That if um, yeah, we have to support the thing. So I and I will will we talk off here and start out that, you know? Yes, my king. Yeah man, give thanks, Aye. my lad. Yes, far right. Yeah man, it's imperative that um you know we support or one another we support each other you know because you know we are the biggest consumers right now globally so if we are the biggest consumers that mean that we are the biggest spenders at present you know what i mean so we must have something to spend to be the biggest consumers my lord so you know we have to support um our our uh you know our community because we support every other community but we don't support yes, our community as the biggest um consumers and spenders um on the global scale right now and this is this is you know something i and i talk about now and we want to just continue to the sound the trumpet um, I always say no one is coming to save I and I. You know what I mean? So if I and I then if it's not I and I then who? And if it's not now then when? You know, yes, we ask yeah. these questions, you know what I mean? So big up I just star and the mindset and the star seed, you know, because the branding of the audience is also very crucial. So we give some seed for that and I and I, I have the lion pride, you know. Mm. So, my, you know, and I know some of the lion pride. As I watch this, I want them to put some some love in the comment section too, you know. Um, two ecosystem collide, you know. Creative ecosystem collide. This is a historic occasion, and right now I have the eye full episode we just released. You know, can I interview the eye too. We have to make the ones them know. And yes. That, that episode is right now on I'm on channel and doing well. So, you know, it's just strength unto strength. I and I there, you know, as a proof of concept for the identity work, you know. Majesty. Yeah, man. So, the eye they must go out there, go over upon, um, you know, lion talk. Um, lion talk. Li- May I get it right, my lad? Yeah, the Lion Voice Network. The Lion, Lion Voice Talk is one of one of our shows, you know. But Lion yeah. Voice Network, we have different programs. But yeah, man, um, we welcome all of the the star seed and the 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 eyes of star mindset family over there. You know, um, one family. One family, one family, my lad. So there, them just go over there, go watch the video. Zine, check out the content. It's more than one video, but um, you know, what I mean, the entire video is out now, so the item can watch um the 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 the, the interview Full within interview. its yeah, man. its entirety. You know, what I mean, so and it's a it, it is a very um positive and upful reasoning that we had. You know, we touch on a lot of things. So um, please go over there, honorable family, um, and check out the interview. Because you know it, it's it's imperative, all right. It's imperative that we support each other. We need that cohesion, all right. Yeah. So make we get down to or make we get up to business. Like. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yes, brother Quiesi. So all right, talk to me now about um the I. You know the the I, brother Quiesi. Where did brother Quiesi? Um, birth, you know, which part of the eye come from, you know, okay. which part of the eye well, born? Uh, I was born at the University of the West Indies, Mona Campus, you know. Where is that? Um, that is uh, in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica. You so, know? why you not just say Jamaica, you born? Well, I want to get dramatic and give the story. I was getting there, um, <laughs> the island of Jamaica, you know what I mean, in the Caribbean, uh, Caribbean, I was descended from the exiles, you know, stolen from Africa. See. And my mother is from Chilani, my father is from Clarendon, you know, so rural people, them come out town, and that is really my uprising, 
shortly after my birth, though, you know, I was, um, you know, I, I left the island and went to Canada, Toronto, Canada, Scarborough, to be exact. You know, so I am really a product of the diaspora or the live diaspora. We would have said in Rastafari, but they would have said diaspora. You know what I mean? So I grew up in Toronto, um, Scarborough, which is now part of Toronto. All the Scarborough man, them know themselves. Um, and you know, in that uprising. So when the hold on, hold on, the brother. When I say you grew up in a Toronto, um, how, 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 how long, how long before you leave Jamaica? How, how much time you spend in a Jamaica? Nine months I spent on the island. Nine months you so, spent. Yeah. So I was a baby when I left. You know. See. The island. And so you're not, you're not really in a Jamaican, then, my lad. No, better so. No, better so. No, You're not really in a Jamaica, dead by lad. But I can't really no, say that still. I play, me I play. Because you're born, and you know, wherever you're born, you know, wherever, you, as we say, your navel string cut, you know what I mean? Pan the island, you see me, I say so. I trouble me, I trouble the eyes still. You know? And then also remember, culturally, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, when you are from a culture and you are taken from that culture, you tend to really appreciate love even the culture more sometimes than the one them who they are in the space. And mm-hmm. I can say that because I have my cousins then. And when my cousins were listening, a lot of hip hop and different things, I was listening to sound and playing on sound system and fully immersed. You know what I mean? Memorizing sound cassettes. Um, you know what I mean? You could talk to me about them, something that immersed in the culture because we, you know, Toronto, for those who don't know, Toronto is very multicultural. So you would have Greek youth, you would have Pakistani youth, you would have Russian youth, you would have Ukrainian, you would have every different type of youth, you know, that are there. So the, 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 you know, Toronto, in Canada, they say it's a salad bowl. They don't say it's a melting pot because each immigrant community retain their cultural identity, you know. So, uh, and, and even up to today, I don't think I've ever met a black Canadian, you know what I mean, that whose family are originated in Canada or, you know, from, because you have black Canadians in Nova Scotia that were there from slavery time. But I don't think I've ever met one. You know, I came in the in the seventies. So. When you say when when you say black Canadian, what do you mean? I mean um, Africans that were enslaved in Canada, and then they they so their ancestry would have date back to you know the seventeen hundreds and them thing there. Because you have that that exists in Canada, but it's a small group in Nova Scotia and then you also have the descendants of the American enslaved Africans that escaped north and were freed in Canada because um, the British abolished slavery first as we know and so Canada when you hear about Harriet Tubman and all of these they were going to the North Star and a lot of um, Africans flee to the north to get their freedom so you have those communities that are there from that time but just like in the UK, you have the Windrush generation in Toronto in the 70s. You had a massive influx of Jamaican migrants them time there. You, you didn't need a visa, you, you, you travel. And, you know, because Canada was looking for workers, you know, so my parents. And actually, my parents had just moved forward to Jamaica. Um, you know, they, they had gone to Canada and tried to move forward to Jamaica, but because of the lack of employment, you know, mm. um, rural people come out town, too educated um, people, but there was no job there. So they had to migrate. They had two youths, myself and my older brother. They had to migrate to Toronto, you know, to try and make it work. Uh, my mother famously tells I that when she came, she had $50 U.S., to our name, you know, when she reached up Canada. Um, and 
my parents who are still together, you know, and have retired in, and lived between Jamaica and Canada today, even remain I'm an inspiration, you know, to see what they were able to achieve with their hard work mm. and excellence, you know what I mean? So, um, we moved to Toronto and, at, you know, Starbro was the place we were in government housing, so we lived, you know, um, what they would have called project, you know, that's where we started until mommy get our work and we were able to move up to what we would have called a working class building community, you know, and then now from the working class building to about third grade, then I was able to move into the, to the suburbs, which was Scarborough. And the, uh, well, well, not northern Scarborough, because I was in Scarborough, but in the southern part of Scarborough. Um, so the Brimley and Steel's area, all of the Canada people will overstand region them, you know. And, you know, so I live, I live a spectrum, you know, from, from, and I remember the stages, you know, from, from the building stage and, bullet beef and white rice, you know, till things get a little better, you know. So we kind of have that. And then my father went to school in Mexico. My father was a veterinarian, so not at the time as a youth, my father wasn't there. He was in school, you know, so I just my mother. And, and so I even live a little single parent life in a sense, you know. Um, so... Broad but range but, of but but you couldn't really call that single parent because you know if you, if you know is he, 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 your father is away you know single parent is when you know the parent one parent is 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 absent you know in the Surely. sense huh. where you, you know what I mean in the sense where there is no communication with the other um, party or the other um parent you know what i mean but um what what was it like what was it like as a as a young man now growing up growing up in canada zin um you know knowing that you have a you have a, a, a cultural tie with jamaica you know you know your, your mother and father is is a, is, is a jamaican um what 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 was that like for the eye growing up um in 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 canada with you know with that um dynamic of a background well uh that is the, the beautiful thing is that every christmas you know we would go to jamaica and one of my mother's close friends used to work for air jamaica them time they too you know so we were going to jamaica i mean i don't have a memory where I don't know, like going to Jamaica for the first time. I don't carry that kind of memory. I just know Jamaica, you know? Yeah. Um, from my youth, um, I have a cousin that's close to my age, so we grew as brothers. So running up and down and chase lizard, and, you know, we we'll look forward to all of them experiences, you know? Because in my mind, I'm I'm a Jamaican, you know what I mean? I, the first time a man ever called I'm a Canadian was when I went to Howard University, you know? I'm a book up in a, some Jamaicans at Howard, you know? Who did there and it was so strange to I, you know? Because in Canada, your identity is based off of where you come from, you know? Mm -hmm. As a Jamaican, so I never experienced that. And then most of my brethren in Canada were inner city and rural Jamaican. So I didn't even know the reality fully about uptown Jamaica till I went to Howard University, you know? And then I kind of experienced that kind of vibration. Um, but I, I, you know, I always, you know, represent Jamaica. You know, I used to do talent shows when I was in school and I always have a little reggae piece in a talent show, you know. You know no hip hop but I always put in that, you know, we always have to represent and we felt obligated to represent our heritage and our culture. And then like I said, I really was into sound system culture as a youth. 
for my brother. I used to bring in the cassette, he would bring in a stone love cassette. And I fell in love with the music and, you know, getting into the dog plate culture and these things. So I was very mad into the sound system culture in high school. They used to call me Bounty, you know. Even mm-hmm. if I go to Toronto right now, man would have said, Bounty, you know. Man would have seen me from them time there, you know. Because I was such a Bounty killer supporter, you know what I mean. Um, from them time the BS Odyssey, Black Cat, 4x4 Exodus, you know, these are songs I'm following very faithfully. Super D, you know what I mean? We know the selector, we know the dub box, we used to have cassette clash on the school bus. I, I want to paint a picture for your audience, you know. So when they hear I and I, it's not strange how I would speak or how I would express myself because it's just a natural, this is how we grow, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, we were having sound clash. A man might have a bass at his cassette and him have a stone love and, you know, you, you, you play at them time they had like a boom box then, you know? So a man brings in boom box, you have your boom box and him fast forward to the dub where he more and play and you now when it's your turn off it, you know? And you clash them way the wheels to do that, you know? Um, and this is even before we reach high school, I'm telling you about, you know? So that was the cultural identity that we carried. Um, you know what I mean? When we got older, we start playing on song, we start participate, we start put our money together for send to Jamaica to buy dub plates. You know what I mean? We have people that bring up the dubs and we are meet them at the airport and, you know? So, mm-hmm. very immersed. And then when I would go to Jamaica, I would go buy 45s, you know what I mean? And the very first 45 I bought was Mud Cabra Flex, you know? My brother buy the Pinchers album, you know? And, and we used to buy vinyl and collect vinyl. Because my father had a big vinyl collection and that collection too was mostly Rastafari artists when I reflect on it, you know, Burning Spear, Culture, Bob Marley and the Whalers, you know, my father had a serious, Peter Tosh, serious collection of vinyl, you know, Dennis See. Brown and them things there. So when I start getting to stone culture, you know, we start, that would be my first exposure to Rastafari, you know, because I was a dancer background, you know what I mean? Um, that is my introduction to Iman culture was through the dance hall. You know, because your parents, of course, when I'm going to Jamaica, I'm going to country, you know, my, my dad's a cousin then, you know, but they were not so much into dance hall as I was, as I said, you know, they would be more into hip hop and things like that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So, when, uh, and this is not strange to anyone from Jamaica, because everyone have that cousin from Canada, from the UK, who come in and come check them, you know? So I know that experience is not unusual for Jamaica. I was that cousin, you know, where me know all of my cousin friend them and my friend them too, because them know every year me are coming in, you know? And we are coming in and we are coming with this and that and a child show up and, you know what I mean, we are run up and down and we are get injured, we are chased, we live at, we are done. We go through all of the phases, so every time we come down, something new is going on, you know, with the youth there. And we, we, we into it, you know, for the time when we're dead, when we, we, we you know, the island. So, that was the experience growing up, you know. Um, now, when I went so, to Howard University, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. So I'm um, going back to Jamaica now, Zane, and you know you you you're back and forth, you know from Canada, you know Jamaica, you know the your, your experience, you know the culture more and more, you're into the sound system culture, and so on. Um, what was the contrast now between Yard and and Canada? In in the sense now in 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 other entertainment scene, there, you know. 
Well, um, Canada was host party, you know, um, basement dance. You know what I mean? You, you go to the basement dance, you find a thing and you wind up and lot of full enjoyment as a young man. But that was the, the main thing in the summertime because Canada is a cold place, so most of the party them is basement. Now when you go to Jamaica, it's outdoor, mm. you know, outdoor session, you know, be, uh, uh, you know, more wider space, you know, more herb culture too, you know, because cousins that uh, use herb and use them and you, you know, that was before I go up in you know, the road there. Um, but the first time I ever went to a real dance was in Jamaica because my parents used to let have, I used to have more freedom in Jamaica than I did even in Canada. So before I could even go a host party at Canada, I'd already gone a dance at Jamaica, you know? Mm -hmm. However, my cousin go, my parents were free, you know? My mother, really, because my father never used to go as much. But my mother used to just free me up, you know, with my cousin, you know? So we were doing things like, you know, you each a ride to go a dance. You go a dance, you have no transportation to get home, you know? You just, have, you just know, so you must reach home. You know, then we are there. So yeah. I was experiencing that before I even started a house party in Canada. But now when I went to the house parties in Canada, um, so I, it was more fun because the 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 daughters them because we were in a, a a phase of life for your audience you know you know culturally we were we were cultured to be what they would call a galley you know this is the upbringing that from from we know itself as as young boys and you want girlfriend and on top of that now you know you're listening to the these songs that are encouraging you to branch out here. So mm -hmm. that, you know, in my bridging them, that is what we used to deal with. You know what I mean? In a high school. So um But Jamaica ja Jamaica Jamaica dance you could have there Jamaica dance and all a all, all song play and a, a, a you know I mean a man feel nice and a shot you know shot start fire. You know, we're yeah. in in a in a in a Canada, I don't know if I the same thing you know, probably when shot a fire in a in in a, in a Canada, probably a somebody a pick it up. You know, in in you know a man and just a you know car through them place the coal as the ice say, zen and you know, outdoor thing, a in a, a indoor should be in type of thing. Yeah, mostly. Um, I, I, but li listen to the funny part now because my cousin then. You know, and my cousin was going to Campion College, so I'm mostly uptown dance now. Go, I didn't realize at the time, you know, but it's reflecting as I grew older now. I start go university, and I realize about. I know I wasn't conscious about uptown downtown in the same way that I am now. You know, mm. most of my brethren in Canada were from garrison communities. You know, so um, what you're saying. They shot them on fire. I was experiencing that in a Canada, you know, if you can imagine, because shot do fire, you know what I mean? And sometimes it's a man where you know a fire, they shot them too, you know what I mean? A lot of my brethren get deported from my high school, you know, um, because of activities they were doing which were not in keeping with the legal code of Canada, mm. you know what I mean? So. Um, we were, and I didn't even realize to the extent, you know, waterhouse, jungle, these are places where my, you know, colleagues them come from, um, that we were moving with in, in high school, you know. So, um, you know, I have a virgin who met his wife because he was at an outside um, dance and shot that fire and, and the man gets shot in his leg and the girl he was talking to fall into the hospital later became his wife, you know? And and the man five used to get on though they're not together today. But we just show you we show you the kind of mentality. And anyone who knows Canada in the in the nineties would would know that um, you know, this was the height of bounty killer. When the bounty them start playing you know, 
set out of fire, you know, that was, that was happening. Uh, it wasn't always violence in terms of things, but man want to show up where them have, you know. Mm-hmm. And sometimes even in a basement, a man drunk and, you know, things happen. So we were you Carabana, you know, uh, we used to joke in Carabana, you, you know the stampede and you, you have to run because shot got fire at a certain point. You know what I mean? So these are things that we grew up with. Uh, know how to position yourself in the dance so if you have to leave quickly you can do that you know um, that awareness you know I mean I have a good brethren who was murdered in high school you know I mean I um, mean no couple brethren were murder man too and never were the same so uh, and these are the things I taught more time you know but we uh, we know the uh, the, the wages of badness, you know, because we see Bridget where we where we know and we love take the wrong route, you know. Mm. Um, at gift times, my parents were very strict, and they were on top of eye and you know, I mean, schoolwork and things like that to save I from enough of them thing there. But I could have been, you know, in a lot of precarious positions just because of the Bridget them when we used to move with, you know. So, you say you could have been one of the most notorious. We could have been there, you know, but we had a father that don't play, you know, to this day. If I call my father, I can get a lecture right now, you know. So when, when, so, when you said don't play, what do you mean? Comparing to now, today, because you know, today, um, youths today is like. Them now have no discipline, them now have no behavior, most youths today. And um, I, 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 I guess it's because of how the system is set now and how it's shaped. Uh, you know, parents don't have that uh, right anymore to, you know, to, to discipline, you know, the, them, them youths. So you find out, say, uh, Youths now, in return, um, disrespect even them parents and disrespect, you know, elder people out there today. What what's the what's what's the difference comparing to you know, backing at them day there, uh, and looking at it now? Uh, well, my father was a physically imposing brethren, you know, in his in his day there dig him up, Paul Clark, you know, um, and he wasn't afraid to move to you physically, you know what I mean, if you not deal with the thing right, you know, and him have a bass voice, I used to fear my father more than the creator, I tell you, you know, before I really know what God, my father, word was law, so, um, and my father was a man that never run the street, so he was home most of the time, you know. So he really um, foresight to walk a, a, a straight line. And I, you know, in hindsight, I really give thanks for his guidance. And he, he was a, you know, he, he's a Garveyite in terms of his philosophy, he's a Pan African socialist type of. You know, bridging a lot of the consciousness that I have now. My, you know, my name, you know, Kwasi Ose Bantu, that was given to I by my father. So I have to give him the maximum respect. But discipline, you know, yeah, man. You know, I was suspended from high school um, one at a time, and yeah, man, in, 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 you know, in deal with it away. And these are the things that help to keep I. You know, um, you know, me think twice before do anything. And like right now, if I tell my my youth, my youth are gonna give me a, a whole story. I would never imagine to talk back to my father. You know. Um, you 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 mentioned um earlier about a single parent. How yes. how how important it is that. Um, a father figure is is in you know every household, 
you know, especially the African household. Yes, it, it's crucial. And I want to retract that statement because I can't disrespect my father. You know, he wasn't a single parent, but in those times, I want the, the, the younger viewers to know we didn't have cell phone in those times, you know. And a long distance call could be cost your mortgage for the month, you know, if, if your mind are right. You understand? So we never really used to hear from him more time. You know, I think that was still in the letter writing in Iowa. You no, know, I was a young youth, so. Um, but yeah, to say single parent, that's not correct. Because we always, you know, when he came in, he would come in some sometime and, you know, maybe once a year or, or so. And we always knew we had a father, and when he did it, he's one of them virgins who have a presence, you know, majestic, he's a king. And that's always, you know, the standard that he set. I've never heard my father raise his wife to my mother from their travel, you know. And these things, just seeing him, how a man holding masculine frame, you know, even. You know, when the woman might be emotional or thing, but the, you know, the true essence of what it is to be a man, we learn that from the father. And having that to model in the house is invaluable for our young men because our young brethren today are growing up without that. And they are very emotional, taking on the characteristics of the feminine energy, you know, um, that tidal energy instead of, um, that masculine, you know, kind of stoic, where you know, say, you have to get things done, you have to put things on your shoulder and carry it some time and don't complain. I never hear my father complain, you know, my life, you know. Mm. Certain things that um, I admire to this day, and I always big him up when I talk to him because he's slowed down now, you know, we're in that season of life now, you know. Once a man, twice a child. True. And, you know what I mean? So, but I always big him up and him laugh, you know? Because he was really a, 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 a true... And, and my father never had a, a father in his home, which is why I even big him up more, you know? So he, it wasn't like he had a two-parent home. He was coming from a single-parent home. But he vowed to break that generational curse, you know? And he did it. Uh, and one of the things is that my father, from I was young, always said he was going to move forward to Jamaica. That was his dream. And I live to see him fulfill that dream, you know? So my parents move forward to Jamaica. My father live in Jamaica right now. So, um, you know, so I, he is the, the, the apex of man, you know what I mean? And I have to salute him every chance I get and every virgin should know what they do when they're not in their child life what they rob their, their especially the sons and the daughters I can't even say one more than the other because for the daughters then it's just as important to be a consistent presence and that's one of the things on my channel that I really emphasize to the virgin them you know because as people from the Caribbean black people we have this gallic mentality, this spirit where we need holy for woman and these things and we're not maintaining the home, you know, in terms of the presence. And we have so many youth with trauma coming out of these situations. So and I pray to the family that we rise to break the generational curses. I give thanks, you know. Um Do you know as I eat. Go ahead. Do you find that um, children that is coming out of a, a single parent um, household, do you find them as underachievers, you know, compared to um, a youth that grew up with, a, you know, both parents? Um, in terms of the, 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 the data, you know, the data, um, it's very clear that single, you know, most of the prisons are filled with single parent um, household children. No, that there's, there's exceptions to the rule, but what you're doing is you're putting your child into. And I would encourage everyone: don't just listen to what I say. Look at the data in terms of percentage of people in prison, 
um, involved in, in, in negative things, criminality that come from single parent homes. It's just a fact, you know what I mean? So I and I need to really examine. There are exceptions to the rule. My father would be an exception, you know? There are great people who rise from single parent homes, but you're really putting a great obstacle because someone is going to be a father to those youth. One of the reasons I never start move with the bad man them in my high school where, you know, doing armed robbery and we're doing certain things is because I thinking about my father, you know? We could have gone and wool if I move, you know? But my father was there in the house and I said, no, I can't, you know? So I, you know, give the man a, a, a fist bump or a pound, we was to call it, and for my yard, you know, even though these are bridges and I love and we spend time and a joke at their time. But because I, and most of these youths never have no father, they were really the men of their homes, you know. So they come in and go out. I had curfew, I had to be in by a certain time because my father now plays. So these are the things and, and, and that is the role of a father because the woman is a nurturer you know the woman is just going to try to make sure you're okay and you you know but the father has got to set the boundary and the discipline in terms of particularly the young boys so you know I, I can't say enough about I and I father and save I from so much you know um, that I could have gotten into. And even later in life, I still heard his voice, you know, um, because there are things we could have get into later in life, so what we said we could never let him down, you know. So I really give thanks and just emphasize that part there. And I don't want the ones them who have you scatter feel um, depressed, you know what I mean, because you can feel judgmental. You know, for your bridge and I said them thing there, but we have to do better, you know, we have to do better, non partial. And it's I and I rule. We are the generation of them that see the face of the most high. Yeah. Let I and I break the generation of curses. Let I and I reestablish the black family that we can rise in our glory. The family is the first government. You know what I mean? Family is the institution which is basic building block of a nation, a healthy nation. Um, so for the forward movement of I and I, as the descendants of Mother Africa, we have an obligation and a responsibility as the man, the vanguard, the warrior class, to uh, restore the family, you know what I mean? Uh, this is something we have to be militant about. The same way we did militant about the girl move them, here we were after militant about the restoring of the family structure. So that is where the best with that I just saw, you know? Yeah, so all right, because um you see the, the, the father is so important and as I say, without the father more while the youth them take up um the tendency of the female and so on. Um, what, what is the eye thoughts and the food? Because the food today um, is induced with a lot of things, Zine, and yeah. it's, it's, it's weaponized in a way that um, boys start a, you know, start a, um, getting more, um, uh, what is it, estrogen other than um developing um what was the other one called uh testosterone testosterone, tes testosterone you know yes. so the, the the food now which is weaponized seeing the the boys them now is start to behave in feminine and yes. um you know, even start to develop in breasts and, 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 and so yeah. on. You know, what, what is the eye thoughts on, on that side of things? Um, these are symptoms, you know. Uh, when you break down the home, you leave the, the lion cubs vulnerable for predation, you know, for predators to come in. And this is what has happened with our African family. 
Um, we have to, have to talk about a lot of these little boys are being molested, you know, as little youths. And this is what's driving some of this confusion in terms of what them, you know, how them live. Mm. And we are seeing the symptoms of, as I said, a breakdown of I and I family. There's chemical warfare through the processed foods. And why are the processed foods so prevalent? If your mother's working, trying to sustain, she's going to buy the food that's easy. She don't have time to be bubbling up this whole food all of the time to give you, you know? So she's going to buy the little thing them where you like to keep you happy and, you know what I mean, keep you fed. So, again, all of these things coming are symptomatic and I think, you know, we have to acknowledge what the symptoms are, identify what the symptoms are, but to fix this problem, it requires the restoration of the family. Um, the fathers becoming providers. You know, right now we have men that don't have no shame, that happy to live off a woman, you know? Mm. Uh, you know what I mean? That is something common. You would, you would have man bragging, you know? They want a rich woman and this and that and don't feel no way as a man to, 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 to do that. So, this is a complete breakdown, topsy-turvy world. As I say, loosey-goosey, liberty that um, has caused this breakdown and the effeminization of the African male. And this was part of the plan because an effeminate male is not going to rise up, you know, and demand freedom and liberation. He's not going to build a nation in opposition to external forces. So effeminization of the man is part of the plan. We have to recognize we are at war, spiritual and material, and we have to make the preparations. And this is why you know, what the I doing, what I and I doing, um, creating Rastafari, independent, non-aligned media, and some of these things are so key. Marcus had the Negro world, you know, he went into the media. Uh, we have to control our own narrative. We're being fed propaganda and TV what? TV programming. Mm. So we're being programmed to act a certain way, you know? Um, to, to, to be a certain way, you know, with, with, the, with the programming, the music, the frequency, you know, the industry right now, when you listen to hip-hop music, a beer, stripper, and prostitution, drug use, we just lost one of the young rapper them, Rich Homie Kwan, and then he just dead, what the, some drug overdose. This is what the frequency that if we're being bombarded with other people. So right now, um, you know, I look at a thing named Revelation 18, come out of her, my people. Let us be partakers in her sins and share in her plagues. And at that I go on, that I say I go on, the more you immerse in this Babylonian system, the more detriment to your mental health, more detriment to your physical health, because if you eat what them are eat, you're going to be sick and full of disease. Um, you know, when I stopped eating meat and certain things, I, I used to get stomach flu every year, you know, at least once a year. I don't get a flu from that time, you know, mm -hmm. probably over 20 years. So, you know, is 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 what you do making you sick and what you put in your, 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 your goodie is making you sick. And... The less that we interact, we have to be serious about what we're doing right now as a people. Is either we are living or are we going to face the same consequence as those who are living in Babylon because the judgment is non partial, you know, not a respecter of doctrine. You know, you have the best doctrine, but you are living the same way, you're going to get the same result. So, Right now, um, for our, our young people, you know, you, you really, I and I need to be cooking more whole foods. You know, the same bubbling that we used to love. 
We have your Dashina, your Yama, your Coco, your, you know what I mean? You, 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 you steam up your vegetable and you cook down your lentil and your this and your that. Those are the food our youth them need to be eating right now. And less of the process, even a lot of the vegan stuff, you know, is highly processed. If it have too much ingredients, it's not good and you know, all are we guilty, you know. I mean at least let me speak for myself. I'm guilty sometimes because we live in America and we use them like some of them things there, so you might let them eat. But you have to balance, you know. I have two teenagers, so you know what I mean I can't be too rigid because yeah, it can't be too rigid or the the rebellion are gonna beat you, you know? So it's just more I try to reason with my youth then and show them and you know when I can get them watch two documentary with them about the things them so you educate them even if they go astray for a little while you know they will come forward you know because they know the right thing and you're not just telling them don't do this don't do that and we're not educate them about why they shouldn't do, do that. that yeah yeah, and I, I fell in that trap, you know, because I was doing that and doing less educated, more, you know, don't do that, don't do that. And my youth, them, no afraid to pull me up, you know. So I give thanks to them. Like I say, my youth reason with I, so, you know, I never used to reason with my parents them way, but they were sure, I, you know, dad, you know, X, Y, Z, and now for those listening and let me learn, you know. So I'm trying to do more educating right now and less uh, trying to tell them what not to do but show them why it's beneficial to live the way that we live and, 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 and you know, why them father can run five miles at 40 plus, you know what I mean? And do the things we may do because of how we live. Mm-hmm. So... Um, this is what we have to do with our youth, them, and it's so. This is why we need our own content and our own music, our own media, our own platform. Well, as as there I mention our um, media and platform, um, I've noticed a few things still. Just want to forget their opinion on them because. Um, we we, we we see over the years them say freedom of speech but you know when you even look on musician musician will sing songs and um their songs get banned so i don't know where does freedom of speech um come into that if you can't um express yourself in 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 that way but um the media today the media today well, the, not the media, but the politicians and, and, and certain authorities are looking at, you know, people, what people are saying, mainly content creators, mm-hmm. what they are saying and, and the things them that they are putting out and um, locking up most of these content creators for, for things um, that is probably deemed to them um fake and uh, i don't know uh not not um not for the public consumption or or, or the i say that because it, it, it's like you don't have any freedom of speech anymore on these platforms um remember that we're we're, we're heading into a time of war you know so in war the first thing to go is is your personal freedom. So all of these high ideals that are written into all of these global constitutions and um, documents, they're the first casualty of war. And so you see there's a clamp down on free speech globally. And it's going to continue to escalate, you know, as we get deeper into this Gideon. So this is why we are imploring the family because we have to build our own you know i i big up um sister for nine rastafari tv mm-hmm. um sister 
she always has been saying to I, we need our own servers, you know? Yeah, man. Um, you know what I mean? Because we, we're relying, because even I and the I, you know, we're relying on YouTube and that's a Google and their servers and their warehouse. And once you're on the next man thing, he might go tell you what he want. My channel has been struck. You know, I got a strike on my channel. I was suspended for a strong. Because I had an episode about vaccine, you know, and someone blocked a sound about, you know, vaccine and YouTube said nothing no go so. You know what I mean? I tried to appeal but never work out. So um we are on their platform, you know, so this is just I I would say where we are now should be looked at as a first phase of the uprising in terms of what we need to do. We're raising awareness, we're gathering the audience, but the audience now wants the audience support. Um, the content creators, we now as content creators have to reinvest in building the infrastructure, the physical hardware infrastructure, mm -hmm. so that we can be truly independent. Satellites and all of these things, we own internet, you know what I mean? Um, we have to be thinking on that level because remember that um, Jeff Bezos, who started Amazon, started Amazon from his garage. Mm -hmm. Right now, he might get ready to put up a satellite to, to, to challenge Elon Musk Starlink satellite, you know? True. So we have to stop limit ourselves. You know, Marcus Garvey said, without confidence in life, you are twice defeated. True. Paraphrase. You know what I mean? And I think we have to now realize that okay yes we have this great culture yes you know we're saying the right things yes everything that the elders said has been proven correct you know without without any blemish you know in terms of of what they what they what they taught so who's controlling this narrative now where does this narrative live in the digital space you know what i mean um, what is the stewardship over this? You know what I mean? When we go uh, to Europe in the summertime and every festival is ice cold and green, but we don't see a dollar, you know, as the one who championed this and made this popular. You know, who should take the blame? Um, so I, it's not a blame thing, it's just an awareness that we need to step up at this hour and we claim ownership and a lot of times ones will make you feel bad that you want to make money Rastafari I've had people tell I that Rastafari is not born a money thing and I burn them out you know why because you don't know nothing what you're talking about his majesty was a businessman majesty take his own money to invest in Ethiopia to bring in the first printing press you know what I mean? To, to start disseminate news in Amharic so he could start put out the narrative of the new Ethiopia that he wanted to put out. You know what I mean? So, uh, another thing that we have to do is we, we have to stop allowing foolishness to reign amongst I and I. Because my sure. allowed voice in the talk, you know? We have to ask, and diplomatically still, me not tell man to go out there go block fight with people, you know? But just ask them, and what is your source? You know, where are you getting that from? You know, so I can look at it myself. Because enough man does a talk. And this has been something that has kept us stagnant, you know, because enough things that are progressive get licked down because people say it's Babylon. Structure is not Babylon. You see what I'm saying? Things need structure to grow. You know what I mean? Or they, uh, or they collapse under their own weight. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that you have to put in structure. Um, you know, as a small business owner, I can't hire an employee if I say I want to hire someone to work at Lion Voice and I don't have nothing for them to do. I don't have nothing free amount for them to do. They're going to fail, you know, after a while. So I have to have a structure and this is the job description. This is what I expect from the I. These are the outcomes that we want. That's not Babylon. Man would have tell you see, I go on like Babylon, you know? Mm -hmm. um, you make a man sign an employment agreement, you know? You know? 
uh, these things are important. Why? Because when you disagree you now, you might go tell you all kind of thing where you and him disagree on, but if it's written down and it's where you agree and it's signed, then at least we have a basis to talk. Yeah, but man. if me and go off a year down and me and go off a month, you know? So these things are, and it's might just to be with contracts. It's might just to be with five year plans. It's might just to build a practical nation dealing with practical day to day challenges. You know, and this is where the movement has to evolve. Speak up the man in the hill who is holding that Bahatawe fullness and living in the wissy wissy. And, you know what I mean? Bird eye for them. Always respect them, but the, the entire nation cannot be bird eye You know what I mean? True. There's a lane for everyone, and some of we have to be administrators, some of we have to be secretary, some of we have to be CEO, some of we have to be whatever. But these things are necessary for the building of a nation, and that is where the movement has to go. And that is what I think this generation is coming. The generation that has reached adulthood now, which I'm a part of that, the I is a part of that. This is where I and I time now lies, you know, is that we stand on the shoulders of our elders who have done great things. And now I and I time is to build the institutions, both private and public, for profit and non profit, that will rise the nation because you need a mix of the two. Some things government not going to do or the Charitable things cannot do. Some things require private investment and a, a man with some money to go in because, you know, the risk in some of these things, um, only an individual is going to take that risk. You're not going to take that risk if you're doing a charity or you're doing different type of work. So you need both to push the, the movement forward. We need Eyes of Star. And I tell Eyes of Star this all the time. We need Eyes of Star to have a staff of employees, you know what I mean? Different programs on your network and you, they are just a direct, you know? Or you have your program, but we need to scale. Why? Because we need to employ our young people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We need programming for our young people. We need to create our own stars that are talking about farming and agriculture and not gliding down a strip of pole. You know what I mean? are taking Zani and this and Percocet and they all kind of foolishness to them and preach to a youth them, you know? So, without I and I having business that is viable and thriving, we would not have that. And I say again, no one is coming to save us. If we think the UN has a swoop down and invest in a Rastafari to rise Rastafari, you know, we're delusional. Rastafari, um, for real. I totally agree. But um, talk to me about, as you mentioned, Rastafari. How did that journey start it for the eye? Because I, I, I heard the eye saying that, um, you know, when you were talking about the sound system culture, that's when it begins. You didn't went into anything much. But how did that start it for the high? And um, what, what has the journey um been so far um since being on the journey um i was introduced to rastafari by my cousin who's a rap right so, right i mean um we were attending howard university and he started uh, shut up you know so i was there as a gq you know living that type of life and you know girls man and thing and and the cousin start change, beard up, you know, scissors and comb, get born. And this is my cousin. Like I said, I grew up with my cousin, like my brother. It's like my brother, you know. We grew up from youth and we're close in age. So from our youth, the two are we are moved together, you know. So once he started, then I was just curious. And I started, I tell people as a skeptic, because I say, this little man of Ethiopia, you know. 
yeah, praise this little man of Ethiopia or how, how, how that go, you know? And I was at the time working at a computer lab, you know, so I had free reign. This is early internet. And so I started search up some things on the internet and um, this was um, 98, you know, 97, 98. Um, so I search up things and print out wooly for things. This is when you have to pull off the side of the paper, you know what I mean? Print up. Um, and now learn whole heap of things that I never know, even though I grew up in a Pan African home. Never know nothing about Ethiopia other than Michael Jackson and the flies, and you know, never know about all of these things. So I started learning and I started going to some deep research. And the more I dig, is the more I find, you know, and then now. At the same time, I go back and forth to Jamaica, so go out of Hellshire and, you know, Chalice of Bond, them things, the reasoning of God. And they just get a revelation, say, you know what? I need to last the eye. It's the Almighty. And at the time, I was listening a lot of Sizzla Falangi, you know, music. So everything in my journey is always music, was always here. I told you that, you know, we started our Bounty Killer was the artist, you know, and it was Tiza Kalanji that she fight from Killer, you know, because I never hear the type of lyrics, the depth, and, you know, everything I was reading, it was in sync with what I was reading, and then took the time and I read the Bible when one uh, year over the summer I was doing work study. Crampton Auditorium on Howard Campus and read Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you know, going on, you know, and see the whole fullness, you know, with the line of the tribe of Judah and the whole connection with Ethiopia and Hebron and Gas and whole thing. Because I've always been a reader, you know, I've always been an avid reader, you know, I hold the title as the reading rap. And is a reason because as a youth and because my parents are sick I mean never used to go out as much. I would be reading, you know. So I used to read a lot of books and through university we see reading books. So once you point me in a direction and then we had Howard University library, which were we had the, the founders library, so whole heap of books did it, you know? Mm. Um, so I just dive in and um, at the same time we started going to the Naya Bingi house, the Naya Bingi house in DC and I didn't know this at the time but in 1988 there was a famous chat with the Naya Bingi elders for the first time left Jamaica to tour America and DC was one of the major, it was through the Smithsonian so I never know none of that, but because of that, you know, some of the elders had come off of the chart and were residing here in, in Washington, D.C. So they had a Naya Bingy house and, you know, my cousin used to go there and things. So one, you know, he said, come out the houses and we go. And before that, I had a vision of an elder rap, you know, playing a kete. And when I went there, I saw that vision. You know, the, the vision realized, and it was Elder but a Jack who has now passed away. He was um, a kete drummer for the son, Rock Michael and Sons of Nigo. If you look at Rockers in the beginning, you know, he might have bridge and where I played a kete. Um, when Rock Michael had a chance. So, um, so we had some legendary elders here in Washington, D.C. So, you know, I was able to rock Iris. Nana Faraika, um, Ras Pidow, Ras Marcos, you know, uh, Mama Bubbles, you know, uh, we had so many um, legendary elders. It was electric, the energy them time there, you know. Every sat of Isis. Um, and then so many elders would pass through, you know, Ras Tani, Bongo Shefan, you know what I mean, um, Ras Iris. Iry Lyon, 
um, came in the late part, right? so I Vi would have come in, you know, all kind of bridging and fishing. And then we had a student organization called the Ethiopian Rastafari Community on Howard Campus. Um, at them time, enough youth were wrapping up, you know, this was in the heights of the, the, the Rastafari revolution in Jamaica with the music where the airways were taken over by Rastafari, Sizzler, Anthony G, Capitan, Luciano. So we had Rast from Trinidad, from all over Barbados, you know, the campus. I graduated with seven other Rastas, you know. So one would go to the Bingy House. It was just an energy at that time. Um, you know, I really want to do a documentary, as a matter of fact, about that time. Because even looking forward, it was just unique. And, and special, it was a special time, you know. I, I really give thanks I was able to witness. Because most of those elders are no longer with I and I in other physical, you know. Um, very few of them are named. Um, I was able to meet Bongo Wato, you know, through them connections there. Martin Plano, I get to see up with Martin Plano, you know, um, different ones. So I, I really consider I myself very fortunate that I was able to reason up with some of these elders that dwell right now as ancestors within the history book. And they helped, you know, because I'd never met black people with that type of historical recall, you know, some of these elders were archives, you know, um, the African freedom movements, we used to have reasonings at the Bingy House, you know, to the hours after class, to steal up studying, and it was open 24-7, so you could go to Bingy House 3 a.m. in the morning, and reasoning, and go on, chalice, and load, things that, you know, uh, kind of thing, and You'd never know who would be there because one would come in from Jamaica, one would come in from New York, Atlanta, Florida. It was just a high Jerusalem school room, you know? So it really was something special. And it was there that I really honed, you know, my education. You know, we learned the Psalms, we learned how to administrate and Naya Bingley because we came from the school where Every everyone is a priest. Every bingy man is a priest, prophet, and a king. So every man have the responsibility to know how to administrate. And even to this day, we still administrate within the eyes, you know, because of the teachings that we got from their solid teachings. Um, we learned the funde. You know, we start from the funde to go to the base. And then we go to the Kete, the repeater. And we learn the art, you know. I am a Maya Bingi. And, you know, it was such a, a great instruction. And like I said, some of the great elders were there teaching I and I. So we get a good three year run, I think. The Maya Bingi all. Still shot fire in there which is a whole other story, you know, and the whole thing collapsed, you know, but, but that's another story uh, for another time. Uh, we, go ahead. Yeah, uh, what, what's their thoughts on um, repatriation? Um, you know, looking at it um, from, you know, where Rastafari started and, you know, to where we are now today, you know, you have a lot of us today are saying that, you know, everywhere, Africa, Jamaica, Africa, but, you know, um, we know the continent of Africa is the continent of Africa. What, what, what's your thoughts on, um, you know, repatriation? Um, I've come to the realization that not everybody's going to make it, you know, and you have to just understand that repatriation is not for everyone. Um, I say repatriation is a must, and I speak and try to surround myself with like mind to think the same way. Um, I stopped a long time ago trying to convince a man why he to go Africa, and why Africa is, is the best place to weather this Armageddon storm 
that it's coming on the earth. Um, but yeah, man, repatriation is, is a necessity. It is a must. It is a reality. It's happening. You know, the, the, the call, um, I, as the I, you know, travel to Ghana back and forth. And I've had, you know, the ability to reason with non-Rastafari black people who have relocated. And these people are saying the same thing that their spirit told them they need to move, you know. They're getting this call, this ancestral vibration that's embedded in our DNA. And this is the reality. This is the time, you know, that our elders spoke about. Um, unfortunately, you know, if you if you're a biblical man, you would have known the story about the elders in the wilderness and forty days and forty nights, and none of them never get to see the promised land. And unfortunately, you know, we're seeing this play out in this time where most of the ones them who chanted for Africa never were able to even touch their foot on the soil, even though they live their lives, you know, chanting repatriation. No, um, and a lot of time when, you know, as you get mature, you realize it was decisions that they made in their life that caused them to become many elders, did get a chance to go, some passed away, there, some are still there. So it's for I and I to know that this is real. It will start as a trickle, which it will be, which it is now. It will grow into a stream, then a river, and then a creeping tide. You know, I always want to be in the early. You know, I, I don't want to be in the in the tide. You know, I want to be there early so I can get my space and comfortable. Um, I always, you know, my brethren and I, um, big up Bingy San in, in Ghana, we always say we wanted to be on the welcoming committee, you know. We want to welcome family home and that is really the mission I'm on is on right now you know I purchased land in Ghana um, I'm in the process of building and so I'm not one of the bridging them who you know the West of talk and a fantasize I tell everyone they need to take a trip save up buy a ticket because you have a lot of bridging to say once they go to Africa they're never coming back I don't think it's realistic you know um, I think we have to take more of a soldier mindset go and do some reconnaissance you know start out if see what you like you might go to different countries too before you feel at home as soon as I step in Ghana I knew this was my place and then worth I was born Kwasi Ose Bansu, so I don't did have the Ghanaian name worth. My father grew me and tell me about Ashanti Kotoko and them things there. So, you know, I always see myself as an Ashanti from a little youth. So, um, I didn't have to travel much places to know, say, Ghana was my place. But I think we have to look at this from a more realistic lens as Rastafari people and go and, 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 and visit and then the key is where is your economics coming from when you're there it's just like if you're in America and you want to move forward to Jamaica um, you can't just go to Jamaica you would have to figure out how you're going to have employment how you're going to sustain yourself the same challenges are there in Africa beauty of Africa is that it's a rising, it's a young population. There's a sense of hope that you can feel palpable in the people and the youth. There's a sense of inner joy that is still there, even after colonialism. It's a wide space. The opportunities are vast and endless. And it's a nice space to, as I say, the weather. This Armageddon that is coming on the earth. So. When you ask guy about repatriation, you touch something very personal because it's something that I've lived and I really um, sound the trumpet for those who are on the fence. Take a trip for yourself and feel how you feel before you make a decision. 
and to look at it from a practical, but it takes preparation. I want to just emphasize that point there. Repatriation takes preparation. It's not an easy road. And your network is so crucial. We know on the ground. So this is why it's so important that you go in and you take time and you do your due diligence, your reconnaissance, your research, you know what I mean? And, and be equipped with knowledge. Lots of people just go on a vibe or now go as Zion. And when they reach a Zion, they're hiring. No, when you reach a Zion, that's when the work starts. We have to go with that mindset, you know? Um, we're building the new alternative to Bobby and him around. But we have to go with the Irish to work and to, to build and to join with our brothers. We're not going to teach them anything more than share information as they would share with I and I. And we are the missing link, just like they are the missing link, because family values are still very strong on the continent, and that's one thing we to love about Africa. A lot of the family values that we have lost in the West are still very strong. So there's a beautiful exchange to happen with I and I and our brothers in Africa. And that is the front line, you know, of this struggle right now is really on the ground, on the continent. Yes, I. Yes, my brother. And that being said, you know, brother Kwesi, I think we're going to seal it right there and we're only stopping now to start again because as there's no reasoning of no hen, Zane, no. and um, yeah, we only stop now to start again, you know, because we always um, can record whenever, you know, we feel like so, you know. Rastafari? Bless it, love. Rasta, look like um, brother Chris is gone before. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna ask him to um, you know, give his um, his social media handles, Zin. But you know, he does check for, look for the Lion Vice Network. <clears throat> I beg your pardon, the Lion Vice Network, on YouTube. Zine, you can also look for um, the Lion Vice Network on um, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook. Zine, yeah. Um, the little demons, them cut off the live um, as we're about to seal up the conversation. Zine. So, I want to thank everyone everyone who take the time out to tune in yeah our special guest today was brother Quasi Banson um, CEO and um, the YouTuber of the Lion Vice Network please go over to his platform subscribe Zane and become become a, a, a subscriber over there as you know it's one family Zane Rastafari family none align Rastafari media houses in so you know keep the thing flowing you know what I mean keep the unity growing all right and um yeah make we keep the thing moving yeah man it was a great honor and a pleasure reason with my brother from another mother um brother Quasi Banso Zin manners and respect peace and love and um give thanks for taking the time yeah man peace and love rastafari yes honorable family and before we move um please remember to check out uh aquaba homes if you're looking to travel anytime soon if you're looking to go and visit ghana you can um check out aquaba home for your accommodation all right your trusted um partners for guest house booking um that's aquaba home all right check them out there and 
the Airbnb website you can um, check them directly Zine outside of um, that spectrum um, you can email them and Aquaba Homes Ghana at gmail.com or uh, you can WhatsApp them and plus two plus two three three five three six seven two seven seven nine or alternatively you can um WhatsApp uh plus two three three five three six six two six two eight two all right those are the numbers that you can reach out to if you want to book with aquaba homes all right and they got um two spacious uh bedroom and entire um apartment for you waiting if you're looking to visit you can book up to seven days um the maximum you can book up to a month with aquaba home so contact them and mention i just star and um you'll be getting 20 percent off your first booking all right so check out aquaba homes all right yeah man over there in accra ghana aquaba homes bless up there themselves manners and respect um the link uh, for aquaba homes is in the description you can um check them out all right so my brother quasi bless up yourself again it was an honor having you here on the platform peace and love honorable family don't forget to like share and um leave a comment let me know your thoughts and views on what's been said here today mindset rastafari time to rise time to open up your third eye full time you start to realize that all this time they've been telling us one bag of lies telling us a god in the sky that for you and i he die thank you jesus or me or mile these things they taught us from we were a child fast indoctrinating the innocent minds mind control is the signs of the time android cyborg ai all these things combined all these things combined might sound like a rhyme but the evidence reality is right before your eyes and are no disguise the age of aquarius is the shifting of the time sun moon stars the planet in the cosmos align as the cosmos align low vibration frequency decline you strengthen your mind access to knowledge information from the almighty creator divine creator divine the time arise I feel with time for rise The time appointed Because I am anointed The time arise I feel with time for rise The time appointed Because I am anointed Smash that subscribe button See you on the next video I just start the mindset